For tonight, with the new year approaching, many people fear about guns and suits. But not anymore. The police handle this like it's like it's a crime. Well, it is a crime, being a weapon of school. Today, we're gonna look at some articles from the past 2019 school from the past 2019 year that talk about this kind of crap. So let's face it. You might be asked, you might say to your parents, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna I'm gonna show my gun to I'm gonna show my uh I'm gonna be on my gun to school so I can show my parents. I'm like, you better not. You better not, come on. If you do, you're gonna be arrested. You be sitting there. Normally, I don't take that chance. And you'll be sitting there. You'll be sitting there like a pooch on the ass out, a puny dad. So now, let's look at some articles to talk about students bring students arrested for bringing guns to school from 12 years old. Let's face it, we have to protect our children from guns, and then many people are saying, and this, this is from today, seven hours ago, two, two students from North Miami arrested after trying to bring guns to school. Two middle, student, middle school students in the French River Franklin K-8 Center in North Miami were, were arrested after they reportedly tried to bring guns to on the campus. They're going to be in court on Wednesday. This was yesterday, and now today, they're going to be in court. The principal saw the students in the park next door to the school, rummaging through their backpacks, said that the school district spokeswoman said, at, said they saw, the, saw them in the park with the backpacks and then pulling out the gun. And then the principal asked, to, asked police on camera to search the two students where the class started. The first student was found an unloaded handgun. The second student tried to stash an unloaded BB gun somewhere on campus before being caught. Both of them were arrested and charged with felonies. Both students were... The exact charges weren't given. But Jackie said the students had, hasn't, haven't returned to school but will face disciplinary actions. But they won't identify students, to, students given the ages. I mean, as a matter of fact... Let me tell you something. As a matter of fact, it's a big safety issue for all students. You can't bring guns to school. We have to make sure our kids are be safe when they go to school. And the teachers have to defend themselves. I mean, yes, I understand the Second Amendment says we all have the right to bear arms. But that, doesn't, that does not give you the right to bring a gun to school and go shoot up a person. And just yesterday, this student right here, a 15-year-old boy was arrested in an emergency exp an emergency expelled Tuesday after it was discovered he had allegedly brought a loaded gun to school. A security officer was calling in the classroom. A teacher said a student left his backpack. The security officer smelled marijuana for a opening the backpack to find drugs and a pistol. The police were calling and responding to the KBD officer found the gun was loaded. The student was found in another classroom caught by officer and tried to run away. He was taken into custody and, and expelled. KBD says the student was booked in the juvenile detention for the firearm violation. There's now an increased police presence at the school. Drugs and marijuana 
drugs and guns. Can't buy guns under the age of 18. Minors. And that days ago, this was an 18 year old was arrested for threatening to bring a gun to school. I mean, make threats, bring weapons, but it's still a threat. Like, threatening to bring a weapon to school. I mean, peanut-free schools, gun-free schools, drug-free schools. On Friday, the Saratoga County Sheriff's Office says an 18-year-old was arrested and charged with making a terroristic threat. Michael Ross is accused of making a school threat on social media at the middle school. The investigators accused of Ross to post a video on Instagram threatening to harm students and bring a gun to school. But the sheriff's office says he's arranged and released on his recognized due to charges and bail reform no laws in New York. So as a matter of fact, if you bring guns to school, you will be arrested and you will be sitting in jail and then your parents will be demanding you saying you brought a gun to school. Make threats, do whatever you want, but you'll, you'll be sitting in that jail cell and you'll be thinking to yourself, I should not have threatened that. I should apologize to the school. I think you should. With everything that's going on, you should be the one apologizing. Okay, and the latest from San Angelo, Texas. An unloaded camp. It was an unloaded handgun. The principal Ricky Black's freshman campus principal Ricky Black's discovered an anonymous tip to the school administrators. He processed it. The student processed a handgun, bring bring warrant to the school against a student kind of conduct. In addition, according to this. Texas Association of School Boards, firing on public school poverty are generally not permitted. Federal law presumes public schools that gun free zones were carrying those weapons such as well as the interstate commerce. The Federal Gun Free Zones Act was enacted in 1990. But the Texas Penal Code prohibits citizens, including handgun license holders, from carrying firearms on public school campuses unless specifically allowed by school district policy of the individual peace officer or armed guard. Unless exempt from the law's prohibition, as police officers is to do the punishable as a third degree felony. The principal told parents in a letter, campus security and safety of the students are faculty and campus top priority. She said no threats were made to any student at the school staff member. The handgun was found that they did not have any ammunition to discover with it. So the bottom line here is don't bring guns to school because it's not right. I don't make threats. Otherwise, you will be arrested and sent to jail for the rest of your life. You will be sitting in jail saying to yourself, I should not have done that. You choose the behavior, you choose the consequence. You choose to bring a gun to school, you choose to be arrested. Next, there's more vandalism happening in all our schools. With the new, with the new year approaches, there's more vandalism happening. Articles that explain about this, what the school district is doing when we come back. Up front tonight on the education beat, I hate vandalism. There's no excuse. I have no tolerance for it. Especially when I'm looking at articles like this, like these articles. There's no excuse for someone to damage school property. Only to get upset or frustrated at the district for not allowing people to bring guns to school. Well, that's that. If you if the if that's what the school district wants, that's what the school district wants. You can't be angry at your teacher. When the officer.
boxes arrived, they found the one broken card reader that was reported by the delivery driver. And then looking around the school, they found that all the card readers on the doors were broken off. Also found that the locks were sprayed with some type of an epoxy into the door locks in an attempt to keep anyone from entering the building. And these audio tapes from a 1380 KCIM explain the whole situation. Listen. Yeah, we do have a suspect. We haven't charged yet. Probably expect that to happen before the end of the week, though. And not a prank, but as as far as like if they're just trying to get school canceled for the day or anything like that, it's a possibility that was their motive. But I'm unsure if there's any more to that motive or not. It was not a foul estimation. The actual damage yet twenty one hundred dollars, which would make the second new criminal mischief. And who is expected to pay? Not the school, us. Tax, we, I mean, we pay, our tax dollars are used for the school. We pay our tax dollars to help out the school. And then Lake Shore Central School District Superintendent says he was enforcing a new bathroom practice at the high school. There must be a company by the Hallmark who used the restroom during class time. It is mounted a dozen vaping and vandalism instances. He explained to Hallmark who only walk students to the restroom and do not accompany them inside. Students can freely use the restroom during lunch between classes. He said it's identical to the policy they're using these during test times. And other schools use bathroom monitors. Do you know that there was a change? There was a Change, there was a petition believed posted by a student protesting the bathroom practice, but it has been taken down. And if you click that link, it's not there. So, but the superintendent says he does not expect parts to be permanent. So that's what the superintendent's doing. He's he's like walking, allowing the hall monitors to walk into the bathroom. I mean, if I was to walk people to the bathroom, they'd be like, like if it's an emergency, like you have, like you can't be like someone's gonna smell you, someone's gonna smell you. You know what? I'm not gonna. Say it because it's the SAT. I don't want to get, I don't want to get demonetized. Even in the gym. I mean, seriously, vandalizing school is wrong. You're going to expect our tax dollars to pay them. I mean, if I were to use my SSI payment to help out with the vandalism, you would think, but you'd be wrong. I mean, this vandalism, I mean, like people say, it's worse than that. You can sit there and say, oh, oh, I'll pay for this. It's worse. It's much worse than that. The district can decide to press charges. Who gets, who, who pays the money? Our tax dollars. They built the school from the ground up and they don't expect us to damage it. You damage it, you pay for it. But as a matter of fact, the law is there to step in, period. I mean, you can't just be sitting there damaging school property because you don't want to, because, because you're angry, angry at something. It's not right. So again, let's not vandalize school property. If you have a problem with something, someone contact your administrator. If you're upset about something, go to go to your assistant principal or you talk to your counselor. But don't take your anger out on the property, on the toilets, on the tables, the chairs, the windows.
It's vandalism. Parents will be calling in, then they'll decide what to do with you as punishment. In school suspension. I don't know. Well, more, give me a break when we come back. We talked about all kinds of scams here. Give me a break, but this one made me one of the worst. So let me tell you some AAP Texas money customers about a new round of scams. People who can't work for the company are calling residents and businesses threatening to disconnect their electric service unless an immediate payment is made. I mean, here's what here's what you can do: call your retail electric provider to provide your account balance before you before you and deriving your account balance and the date that your payment is due. Double check the phone number that's on your bill. A bill number could connect you to the scammer. And keep in mind, the AP will not contact you if your bill is past due or, or one of your servers might be disconnected. That's a job for your retail lunch provider. If you feel like someone's trying to cheat you, just hang up and call the police, then contact AP Texas. As a matter of fact, if I was being scammed like that, I would just hang up the phone like, like that. Or call that, audio record it, and then send it to the media. Then they would have been like, then, bam. Those fools don't deserve to sit on my stage because of what happened. Okay. Now the very latest in the Jack Doherty case. Another skipping school that happened because of, what he, because of his mom's birthday. It was a bad idea for him, but he decided, okay, I'm going to go skip school. I'm going to go skip school for another video because, because for a video, I mean, he skipped school because of his mom's birthday. It doesn't matter. You still have to go to school, but he was mad about it. Give me a break. You never skip school, period. It ain't right. If you skip, I told you this many times, if you skip school, you will not get the best education you can get. Like I said in my last episode, we talked about this. I mean, many people decide, well, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to skip school for videos, and then all of a sudden, people are telling you to skip school, and then. And then what else happens, your principal asks you why you skip school every day because of videos and they look at your videos and it's like, who do we believe here? And what do we do? And it's like, okay, what do we do next? I mean, what, I mean you come to the human and it's like, what do we do? And it was a bad idea to do that, but he decided to do it anyway. Why? Because he he prefers to not go to school. He prefers not to go to the public school and prefers to do the paid school. When you get free education from our tax dollars. So, right. You may have rights here, but... But you do not have the right to skip school. Period. It's not right. If you do, then what's going to happen is... You're gonna be. You're not gonna get your best education. I told you before. We talked about truancy like last year, and then it has happened again. Nobody understands. No one does. I'll be back in a moment. Friday on this show, we're gonna be talking about pornography in all our schools. Articles that are read that. 
articles that show that teachers, or administrators, or the district is being arrested or suspended for bringing pornography to school or showing pornography. And I don't want the kids to get involved in this because I care about their safety. It's a, it's a parent-only topic show that you don't want to miss. Tomorrow, Friday, I'll give me a break. And that's all the time we have for this, for this Wednesday. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'll see you, I'll see you Friday. Good night.